So we're kind of going back backwards to 1.1 again. <clears throat> so this is 1.1 part 2. We're talking about non-standard operations. The mathematical operations you have learned so far, such as the standard operations, addition, and subtraction, give you instructions for what to do with two numbers. It tells us to add 3 and 5, subtract 8 and 7. It's a relationship between two numbers. For instance, addition, denoted by the plus symbol, instructs you to find the sum of two numbers. You can also define non-standard operations, which is what we're talking about today, using combinations of standard operations. So that's essentially what non-standard operations are. Combinations of the operations that we already know how to do. For example, you could define the following operation, a squared dot b equals 4a divided by b. So you're combining multiplication along with division. Just turns into an expression that we evaluate, um, which is what we talked about last week. So that's just what non-standard operations are, the combination of our operations we know how to do already. So let's look at some examples. The instructions say evaluate the expressions using the non-standard operations a circle dot b equals 2a plus b and a circle plus b equals 2a divided by b. Letter a wants me to evaluate 2 circle dot 4. So the first thing I need to do is identify which operation I'm using. Since it has this circle dot on there, oops, circle dot on there, I know I'm going to be using the expression that has the circle dot in it. So I'm using 2a plus b. The next thing I need to do is to determine which number is my a value and which number is my b value. 2 is in the same position as a. So my a value is 2. 4 is in the same position as my b value. So my b value is 4. Now I'm just plugging these two numbers in right here to my operation 2a plus b. So 2 times 2 plus 4. And now it's just an expression that I need to evaluate. So I'm using my order of operations to work it down. So multiplication comes before addition. So I'm going to do 2 times 2, which is 4. And now I have 4 plus 4, which gives me 8. And that would be my answer for letter A. Hoping this is not too hard to understand. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to always email me or message me on Canvas. Um, but I think everyone should be good doing these non-standard operations. So now let's look at letter B. Letter B, I have the 3 circle dot 5 inside parentheses and then I have circle dot 2 outside of the parentheses. So just like my regular order of operations, I'm going to do what's inside the parentheses first. So I'm going to do 3 circle dot 5 first. So once again, I'm using the expression that has the circle dot in it. My a value is 3. My b value is 5. So I'm doing 2 times 3 plus 5. Now just using the order of operations. 2 times 3 gives me 6. 6 plus 5 gives me 11. Now that's not my final answer, that's just the answer I'm getting for 3 circle dot 5. So 11 is taking the spot of 3 circle dot 5 because that's what we got when we evaluated that non-standard operation. So now this problem turns into 11 circle dot 2. Once again, I'm using the operation that has the circle dot in it, so 2a plus b. Now my a value is 11, 
and my B value is 2. So plugging those in, I get 2 times 11 plus 2. 2 times 11 gives me 22, and then 22 plus 2 gives me 24. So evaluating this whole expression on letter B, I get the number 24. So let's look at letter C now. Letter C. Once again, I've got an operation inside the parentheses, so I need to do that operation first. Letter C, we have the same expression in the parentheses that I had on letter B. We said that was 11, so I'm not going to do that work again. I have 11 circle plus 2. Now I'm using this second operation, 2a over b. Once again, I'm identifying my a and my b value. a is 11, b is 2. I'm just plugging those values in to this expression right here. So 2 times 11 over 2. 2 times 11 is 22 divided by 2. 22 divided by 2 gives me 11. So value, evaluating this whole expression on letter C, I'm getting the number 11. Now if you notice, B and C have the same numbers to start off with. But we got different answers, and that's just because the operations that we were using changed on us, so that therefore changed my answers. So let's look at our last set of examples. So very similar to the examples we just did. It says evaluate the expression using the non-standard operations a circle dot b equals a minus 3b and a circle plus b equals a squared plus b. So for number 6, I'm using this first expression. My a value is 1. My b value is 3. Now I'm just plugging in to this expression over here, the very first one. So 1 minus 3 times 3. Do my multiplication first. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 minus 9 gives me negative 8 for number 6. So once you get the hang of these, these should go pretty quick. Let's look at number 7 now. 2 circle plus 7. So now I'm using my second operation over here. A squared plus B. A values 2. B values 7. I'm doing 2 squared plus 7. 2 squared gives me 4. 4 plus 7 gives me 11. Once you plug in, you're just evaluating your expressions using your order of operations. Uh, number eight. <clears throat> Once again, I've got an operation inside parentheses first, and then I've got another operation going on outside the parentheses. So I need to do the parentheses first. My a value is four. B value is one half plugging into this first operation. 4 minus 3 times 1 half. Do my multiplication first. Negative 3 times a half gives me negative 3 halves. Now I need to subtract 4 and 3 halves. If you remember correctly, when we add or subtract our fractions, we need a common denominator. So a good common denominator here would be 2. My farthest right fraction already has a denominator of 2, so I can just leave it the same. On my first fraction, I multiplied the denominator by 2 to get this new denominator of 2. 1 times 2 gave me 2. 
So whatever I do to the bottom of that fraction, I have to do to the top. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. Now that I have the same denominator, I can do my subtraction. I subtract my numerators, 8 minus 3 gives me 5. Then I keep my denominator the same. So for 4, four circle dot 1 half, I get 5 halves. Now once again, this is not my answer because I still have that circle dot 2. I now have 5 halves, circle dot 2. And so now I have to do that final operation. My A value is 5 halves, B value is 2. So I get 5 halves minus 3 times 2. 5 halves minus 6. Got to get a common denominator once again. Once again, 2 is going to be a good one. Multiplied 1 by 2 to get to 2. So 6 times 2 gives me 12. 5 twelfths minus 12, or 5 halves minus 12 halves gives me negative 7 halves. So my final answer for number 8 would be negative 7 halves. Yes, you can get a fraction as your answer. Um, you might occasionally get that, or a fraction as your answer if you start off with a fraction like we did here on number 8. Let's look at the last example now. Once again, I'm doing my operations inside the parentheses first. So I'm going to start my work over here, give myself plenty of room. So my A value is 8. B value is 5. I'm using the circle dot operation. So 8 minus 3 times 5. Negative 3 times 5 gives me negative 15. 8 minus 15 gives me negative 7. So this 8 circle dot 5 is being replaced with negative 7. So now I get negative 7 circle plus 4. So for my final operation, I now have to use this last operation. A, a plus circle plus B equals A squared plus B. A value is negative 7. B value is 4. So I get, plugging in, I get negative 7 squared plus 4. Negative 7 squared is telling me to do negative 7 times negative 7. That gives me a positive 49. And then 49 plus 4 gives me 53. So my final answer on number 9 is just the number 53. So once again, it's kind of similar to our evaluating expressions. There's just a little more to it at the beginning. But once we get stuff plugged in, it's just evaluating our expressions using our order of operations. So like I said, hopefully we got this down pretty good. Um, here's our assignment. Page 8, numbers 24 through 27 all. And page 53, numbers 4 through 7 all. I'll have that posted on Canvas, so make sure you check Canvas for the due date on that. Um, it will be on there with it. It's only eight problems. These go pretty quick, so it's not a whole lot of work. You're welcome. Um, Y'all have a great day.